it's a beautiful day today and today I made this I've added more to my tulip mound and if you stick around you'll find out how and why You are watching Let's Plant. If you want to keep up to date, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, make sure to hit like or follow on my page. So it's time to talk about the tulips behind me. As you can see, I have reinforced the tulips on this upper mound here. And I'm keeping the ones on the bottom layer as is. I'm taking a quick break from my propagation series of videos because I wanted to show you an update on how my tulips are doing right now. As you can see, a lot of them are flowering right now and I'd like to show them to you before they finish blooming. Because at this rate, if I move through all of my planned propagation series, by then it would be too late and the flowers would already be gone. So I had to insert this there. As you can see here, the petals have already fallen off and all of them are fertilized. It happened so fast. So yeah, I'm doing this episode now while I still have them. To start this story, let's look back to episode 62. This was where I planted all of these tulip bulbs in the ground. It happened in autumn around half a year ago in March or April. And in that episode, I explained why I wanted to mix tulips with my succulents. Well, I've learned that the growing conditions for tulips and echeveras are actually similar. Tulips are indigenous to mountains with temperate climates. And I can pretty much say the same with echeverias. Lots of them grow in rock faces, high up in the mountains. And what makes them perfect for co-planting is that succulents have really shallow roots, while tulip bulbs tend to go deeper. If you imagine that this is ground level, so mostly at the top would be succulent roots and deep down would be tulip roots. Allow me to further explain. Let's take winter for example. Echeveras are dormant at the time. They take in a lot less water than they normally do when they're growing. The soil would be drenched. That's why it becomes a lot easier to overwater echeveras during winter. If you mix them with tulips, the tulips would pull out all of the water from the soil during winter and that means that the echeveras would not be sitting in wet soil for longer than they need. The reverse is true during the during summer so what they would do is to gather as much water as they can that way not a lot of water would seep through to the tulip bulbs they're helping each other perfect symbiosis it was around that time when i realized that tulips are also xeriscape friendly plants drought tolerant plants and they can live in similar conditions as succulents and they require roughly the same amount of water or the same watering technique as succulents i usually struggle with having tall features in my garden, especially since I tend to collect low growing plants and because of that I thought that tulips would be perfect to give my garden a sense of height and I'm pretty sure I could easily find the succulents to make contrast against their flowers. And so my plan for this spot is to have the tulips grow, wait until they finish growing and finish blooming, that way I would know how much space they would need and once I figure that out I'm going to create a tapestry of succulents around them much like my previous landscapes. So this current phase is mainly about reserving the space for the tulips. This phase took me about six months and it's still ongoing because as you can see, some of the tulips are still growing out. They haven't even bloomed yet. And I'm guessing that I would be moving to the next phase maybe around mid-October or something. So until then, all I have to do is just to wait and watch them grow. And of course, all of this waiting is making me restless and I've been looking at this clump for the past few months and I tell myself, man, that looks so bare. I wish I had more tulips. And that's when I remembered that we have this tulip festival every spring and we always go there every year. I checked the calendars and saw that yes, it was still running, it was still open. So I applied for leave at work and I drove my family out to the festival. Hello! The festival took place somewhere in the east of Melbourne in a suburb called Sylvan and it was called the Tesalar Tulips Festival. Tesalar is one of the larger tulip growers here in Australia. While we were there, we gave Nikki her first treat of the tulip festival.
at the end of the day, before we left, we noticed that there was a nursery out near the front entrance. So we decided to have a look. And long story short, I bought new plants. It's finally the weekend and I can now shift from the planning to the planting stage. That's just one letter difference. So I've got here these four varieties of tulips and I'm thinking of planting them along this pot. And one of the first things that I have to think about is the placement. So let's do a bit of staging. The tulips can grow tall and I would like them to be adding a bit of interest in terms of height. So I would like to have all of them sitting on top of this mound right here. So this means I have the gaps in the bottom layer around the tulips that are already here. That's where I will be planting my succulents in the future. I'm thinking of using this sort of placement where they are forming an arc at the top. Although, part of me is thinking that I should be filling up this back as well. Maybe this one can go here. So like this. So all four of the new ones will be at the center. I think this more compact look would be better. So yeah, I think tulips are meant to be clustered anyway. I have never seen tulip roots before. This would be my first time, so I'm a bit curious. The soil is a bit uneven and because of that, I got my spade so I could move them around, shift them around. And besides, I would need to dig holes for them. So, just to redistribute this, This is a nice, fairly uh, loose soil. It's the same mix that I use for my succulents. And from what I've read, it's the same sort of mix that tulips want. Especially in my climate, so let's see how it goes. I think they should be good. And now, better start digging. Just marking out the spots, just in case I forget. While digging, I found out that I previously placed some rocks here, serve as barrier. I should move this out. And this would require a bit of muscle work, so I have to put on my gloves. I'm digging around the rock, just to find out the extent, the space it's occupying. So I will know where I should be focusing my digging on and I could lift it. This might be a large rock, I can't remember. So I need to reveal as much of its uh, outer dimensions, dig around it. That would give me better leverage. If I do not do this step, then once I start lifting the rock, I would just be exerting pressure against the weight the soil rather than just on the rock so we have to remove as much of the soil around it as I can Finally budging, that's progress. Next step is to backfill this hole with loose soil.
So I took those four plants, staged them, and we're back to where we are now. Here's what we have right now, and as you can see, the top layer, I think the top layer is already done. And from here, all I have to do is to mark out the space which I'm allowing the tulips to grow into. That should be fairly straightforward since they are already in and they already form a clump. And from here on out, I could start filling up the space around them. I was thinking some ground cover, but I don't know yet. I have yet to do the planning stage for this spot. As for the bottom layer, I have to wait for this two to finish growing. But on this side, they are both fully grown. This one even finished flowering already. So what I'm going to do is to mark out the spaces that this two require. I can start making my tapestry here. And maybe leading to this point, you would be asking me, Chuck, why tulips? My wife also asked me that same question. If you look at my channel name or my brand name, Seriska Pades, which stands for Cerillos Zeriscaping Escapades, you would definitely notice that there's no word succulents in there. <laughs> and that's right, my channel is about Zeriscaping, which is landscaping with drought tolerant plants. Tulips fit the bill. Special thanks to my Patreon sponsors that's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gorini Noti, Kamler Vias, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, and Q2. Yeah, Q2, in behalf of your son or daughter, I forgot to ask, sorry. <laughs> and finally, you can check out my Instagram that's at Seriska Page, and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. We're going back to propagation content next episode, and I'll see you then. Bye.